Welcome to Live in No Holds Bar Dungeon. It is episode one of Last Fan Standing, a YouTube exclusive. That was really sexy, sir. With I the do bass what I can. there. That's good stuff. Oh yeah. As Nick said, this is Last Fan Standing. This is our wrestling exclusive podcast, which we've been talking about doing for months. We're now actually going to be doing. And basically the way this is going to work is it's going to be on every off week to the No Holds Barred podcast. Every off week, that is true. Which is cool because now it means we're going to be podcasting once a Ooh, week. You will get a weekly dose of our <sighs> awesomeness betcha. tickling your eardrums, making you hear a whole bunch of awesome words. Oh, buddy. I'm going to have to change our Twitter <laughs> our Twitter description now, too, because I say <laughs> twice monthly, and now it's not. Yeah, now it's once now, a week. Now it's once a week. Uh just just note that this first podcast is a little bit late. There there was a little bit of stuff going on. Uh, you got called into work and then got sick. <laughs> yeah, basically. So, um, th- this podcast won't be on Thursdays or Fridays every week. Yeah, um, no, not not typically. We- ho- hopefully, we'll move it back to Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I hopefully think, Tuesday. I think Tuesday would be good because then we can actually incorporate the Raw results. Yeah. In. So either after Raw on Monday nights or on Tuesdays. Sounds like a plan. So, kids, here's what we're going to talk about with our first episode of the podcast. I should mention, too, I should just do a quick shout out. We originally were supposed to have a couple of guests on the podcast as well. And this is, again, I can attribute this to me getting sick and kind of dropping the ball and being a fucktard. Um, uh, We were supposed to have both uh, Dave Pellerin, who's a university friend of mine, who first introduced me to TNA, and I've still yet to... uh, pay him back for that horrendous tragedy to my life uh <laughs> but um bump and uh, we were also supposed to have the masked tweeter which was going to be a huge thrill for me because tweeter is hilarious uh so he was supposed to be on the podcast as well so i have to apologize we are going to get try to get them on on the next podcast but on this podcast what we're going to be talking about is both the raw 20th anniversary show quote unquote that um that happened on monday night and we're also going to be doing a preview to the royal rumble Woo. Uh, the Royal Rumble, of course, being one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, we figured it was important to dedicate the majority of an episode of the podcast to the Royal Rumble, and what better way to get the podcast kicked off? Of course, it has to happen. Exactly. Now, one thing I do want to do before we get into anything. What's that? We talked about this a little bit earlier. Yeah. I want to try to do my best road dog. Okay. For those of you that don't know, the road dog, Jesse James, always used to do this introduction in his matches where he'd go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and then he'd sort of string off and do and do his intro prior to his matches like that before he started shit talking his opponent. Well, we don't have any opponents, but at yet, but uh, at the very least, we can at least try to do the road dog intro. So I'm going to be giving it my best shot, sick and all, to hit you with my best road dog Jesse James impression to get this podcast kicked off right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the No Holds Barred Podcast proudly brings to you the podcast of a lifetime. Nick Stevenson, fearless leader, Justin Robar, Bridgewater's finest. We are last fan standing. Yeah. Uh, that, that was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. It's going to be real fucking loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could see the spikes there. On well, I kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of, I, I, I even tried to rein it back a little bit because I, I could have, <laughs> I could have gone sort of full hog on it. But anyways, that's my best. Maybe, maybe when I'm not quite so sick anymore, maybe we'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you another one. Maybe we'll use it as part of an intro or something. It sounds, sounds like a plan. So let's talk, let's talk raw 20th anniversary. Uh, that happened on Monday night. Yes, supposedly. Uh, yeah, and kind kind of bad because I mean, Raw 1000 was hyped more than the 20th anniversary show. Oh, big time! Yeah. Oh, yeah. No question about I mean, it. And I mean, both are both both are huge. I yeah. mean, Raw turning 20 and and the anniversary show. I I would or, think that the actual birthday show which is the one that happened on monday should have been the one i would have thought that would have should have taken priority yeah you know what i mean yeah like especially heading down towards wrestlemania like it's it's a it's it's a pivotal sort of show but in any case that's not exactly what we got and uh some fans were really put off by it i really was initially um now that i've thought about it a little bit more maybe not quite so much but it's it's just still kind of bugged me that like for the 20th anniversary show 
and for the fact that the show was in Texas. Yeah. The show was right in fucking Dallas. I think it was Dallas, wasn't it? Dallas, Texas? I believe so. It, it was, at the very least, it was in Texas. Stone Cold wasn't on the show. No. Shawn Michaels wasn't on the show. No. The Undertaker wasn't on the show. No. Terry Funk wasn't on the show. Who? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, they made no mention of uh, Eddie Guerrero, who was born in Texas. They made right. no mention of any of the Von Erics that was born into I mean, like, there. I, I think I sat down and counted it, and I counted there are 17 WWE Hall of Famers or people that should be in the Hall of Fame yeah. from the state of Texas. From Texas. And yeah. not a single one of them was on the show. No. I mean, Mick Foley was, but he was getting introduced into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, the, the, only, the only real quote-unquote legends that we saw on the show, and I'm not intending to say that these guys aren't legends because they are, but just the, the only legends really that we saw, saw on the show or really any connection to the past 20 years of Raw was Foley, Foley. Flair, and Vince. And The Rock. And The Rock, but I mean, The Rock is... The, when the rock was really you know soaring through raw he wasn't roided up grease monkey like he is well, now no no absolutely and not and that's not a racial thing grease grease monkey is a term <laughs> so no racism on last fan standing <laughs> um <laughs> you're going to do that are you <laughs> probably not i just uh, thought okay, for okay. for the for the six people that listen to no holds barred that maybe it might be kind of a, oh yeah i remember that so i mean <clears throat> From my perspective, the 20th anniversary show should have been something a lot more than what it was. Yeah. But at the same time, it was still, for your average Raw, it was probably an above average episode of Raw. Would you Would you say that? Like, in terms of quality of the matches and, and, and such? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I liked it a little bit more than the, I, I guess, the Raw beforehand. I mean, mm-hmm. the matches, I mean, what, they had, like, Two or three matches. Four. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. I'd still like to see more matches in a three-hour show. I would hour like show. to see more matches. Like, I, I mean, mean I, I know they have to have storyline ship, but I right. mean, give us more matches. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, CM Punk is awesome on the mic, but when he comes out and cuts like a 40-minute fucking promo, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it says basically the exact same thing four true. fucking times. Yeah, I fair mean, enough. L- let's have a match. Yeah, fa- yeah, and, and I agree with that. As a point of reference, uh, WWE's like main event, WWE main event or whatever, that, that weird show that goes on on Wednesdays, yeah. has two matches in one hour. Really? Yes. So, I mean... You have two matches in one hour versus a three-hour Raw where you might have four or five. Like, it doesn't make any sense. That That is crazy. So, I mean, the, the the point of this is watch main event and NXT if you actually want to see wrestling. Oh, NXT. I mean, I, I, for the longest time, I didn't know about it. Right. And then you told me about it, and it is awesome. This, they're fucking great. They're great matches. I don't mean to. I don't want to curse as much as I do on No Holds Barred, but like NXT is a great NXT is arguably the best show that they do. Yeah. Like I, I think I think that argument can be made certainly from an in ring perspective. But anyways, we had the Raw twentieth anniversary show, which uh, was opened up, of course, by Vince McMahon coming out and saying, or, so, or, or sorry, rather, but even before Vince came out, oh, one yeah. one thing I did want to mention the the. Intro the video package that they put I, at the beginning I of the show. That. Loved it. Like yeah, they did, they did the, the mashup the, of uh, of all the all intros. The like intros of Raw. Yeah. The fa- my favorite Raw intro that they've ever had is that one where it's it's Austin walking through explosions, and he walks up to the ring, and in the ring is Austin, Rock, Undertaker, and Bret Hart, and they're all just like throwing ball, just just punching each other basically and going back and forth and it's really like intense camera cuts and stuff mm. that's my favorite opening to raw ever and they haven't used it in 15 years oh yeah <laughs> but it's nice. it's 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 i think it's the 97 opener but it's it's absolutely my favorite one i don't have a favorite no you don't like the one that was attached to the nickelback song burn it to the ground tonight <laughs> ah. <laughs> i'm sorry i had to remind you of that ah uh... Worst intro <laughs> ever. Well, at least worst intro song. The intro itself is okay. Uh, but yeah, the intro was okay. The song but is th- just they, not. They could have matched it to a whole lot better song. A little bit. 
Um, yeah, just yeah, just just uh, a tiny bit. But anyways, the actual show itself, as we mentioned, opened up with Vince addressing the WWE universe and uh, Big Show in a suit, which I love. Big Show, <laughs> Big Show in a suit is one of my favorite characters in WWE. Uh, Big Show in a suit came out and and interrupted him, and he was all mad pissed because Del Rio beat him yeah. for the world championship. Which, by the way, um, the Big Show is the angriest and biggest man I've ever seen in a suit since a constipated Don Fear. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was just he was a very very angry boy. He, he was, and Vince was like, "No, no." Vince was like, "What exactly do you want me to do?" Yeah, and Big Show yeah. was like, no, "Well, I want you to reverse Mr. it, Mr. McMahon." Yeah, that's true, Mr. Mc- yeah, Mr. <laughs> McMahon. I want you, I want you to reverse it, and he was just like, mm, "No." no. Because that's that is what makes logical sense to not reverse a, a clean win in a last man standing. Well, match. yeah, and it was a good last man standing match. <laughs> yeah, it was. Oh, that match on SmackDown was fantastic. Oh, hell yeah! Really, really good. And uh, Del Rio's Del Rio, of course, now is is turning face. What do you think of Del Rio's face turn? By the way, do you like him better as baby face? I I kind of do. I mean, he's. For so long, he's been with with Vicky, right? And I mean, he's just been this. Uh, well, no, sorry, he's... we're we're talking about Alberto Del Rio, not oh, Dolph Ziggler. The... That's okay. Wow, it's all right. It's all right. Wow. They're, it's all right. They're both they're both Spanish, wow. so it's, it's okay. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I guess it, is is he turning babyface? He's 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 pretty well already babyface. Like I think the plan. The plan there is is like he's kind of taking over Rey Mysterio's spot as like the main guy to bring in the Latino audience. Yeah, but you see, I've I've never seen him to be that much of say a heel or not uh, not a babyface. He's I mean, he's been a tweener his whole freaking career. He's been in between. Yeah, and like, I mean, it's not like he's one or the other. I mean, he, he comes out sometimes and he talks to the fans. And yeah. I mean, he's totally like he, he drives the fancy cars. And if what the carone. La, 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 la. Exactly. And, um, uh, Del Rio to me has always been a very boring heel. Like if they're try- if he's trying to be a heel, yeah, he's he, a very he's boring not. heel. You know what I mean? So like I think at least as a baby face, fans can get invested and have a reason to like him maybe but that's that's the whole sort of push I, too i just don't know where we where we changed roads right there oh I we just, were talking about Dolph Ziggler and the you asked me about uh, del rio we we never started talking about Dolph Ziggler, sir <laughs> no honest I, I swear to god you can go back and listen to the tape we never actually started talking about Dolph Ziggler. Because we we were talking about this, yeah, and then we were like, "Big Show is mad pissed that Del Rio beat him for the title in the Last Man Standing match," and we said the Last Man Standing match was really good. And then I was like, "What do you think of Del Rio's face turn?" You're insane. You, you can go back and listen to the tape, <laughs> go sir. On. Moving Anyways, on, moving on. <laughs> last Man Standing, Last Fan Standing. See, now we're all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Del Rio comes out, and um, yeah. Del Rio and, and Ricardo Rodriguez, I should say, come out and they have this big bucket full of, um, what do you call that? Confetti. Confetti. And big Show thought it was water or some kind of liquid. Or yeah, exactly. And he's don't throw it on my suit or I'll break your neck. Yeah, he is, or, or, or I'll break your freaking neck. Do you understand me? <laughs> and you know what? Even though it was Big Show in a suit, that was pretty damn imposing. Yeah. Uh, and Teddy anyways, bear in a suit. <laughs> And anyways, of course, the the fight broke out there, and then uh, Del Rio, which Del Rio handled, seemed to handle Big Show like pretty much with ease. He did. Now, maybe, of course, it was because he was wearing a suit, but possibly, you know, it just seemed like he he dealt with him very easily. And of course, that set up the match at Royal Rumble, yep. where Del Rio will be defending the world title against Big Show. Well, basically, it didn't set it up that way. I mean. Del Rio came out and he said, "Why, why not have the match right here, right now?" Mm. And Joe, Joe is always, you know, no, I want to do it on my terms, right? You know, I'll classic have heel the technique. Fucking match. Well, excuse me, I'll have, Sorry. <laughs> I'll have the match when I want it. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, 
that that's how it came to be. Exactly. So, yeah, fair enough. So the, again, and it's good. So now we have that match to look forward to at the Royal Rumble, and we'll talk a little bit about that match here in a bit. Uh, after that, we had the um, segment uh, Wade Barrett uh, with a clean victory. Mm. A clean one, two, three over Randy Orton. Wade is starting to get really, really good. Wade is building some mad momentum because, like, Orton Orton has kind of been having trouble like with the shield and stuff like that. And yeah. I don't think the shield didn't come out in this match, did they? The, no. No, it was just a straight up It was a clean victory. Straight up. And it, it no matter what people say, uh a clean victory on Raw means so much more than a clean victory on SmackDown. Like Raw is oh, so clear clearly the top show. One one thousand percent. All right, so like anything that happens on SmackDown is completely negated, yeah, by what happens on Raw. So yeah, so clean win by Wade Barrett over Orton. Uh, Wade Barrett would then later go on. I, I don't can't remember if it was in, on that episode or at a later time and declare for the Royal Rumble. It wasn't on this episode. Okay, so Wade, but Wade, I has, don't think so anyway. Yeah, but Wade, but Wade has in fact declared for the Royal Rumble. Yes. So. Hurrah on that one. Hurrah, Wade Barrett. So after that, we went to the um, Team Hell No underwent their four-month evaluation with Dr. <laughs> Shelby, which this actually ended up being kind of a funny segment because Dr. Shelby brought in um, Team Road Scholars and was like, we want Team Road Scholars to antagonize Team Hell No. Yeah. But they didn't. They antagonized Dr. Shelby. Pretty much. And Dr. Shelby was getting all mad pissed and all mad pissed. They they, and... De- they declared him to or compared him to Dr. Phil, which I thought was really yeah. funny. And that's what sent him over the edge. Yeah, he started yelling Dr. Phil and then um he said get the fu- get out of here and uh Kane upcut Damien Sandow and yeah. yeah. Then they started doing the yes chants. Yes. I thought that was really funny when the, the three of the three of them are just like, Yes, yes, yes. I liked I liked it. So that the segment was kind of like, Oh god, you roll your eyes is like, really, are we still doing this shit? Yeah. But you know, that that, that segment actually ended up being not too I bad. guess. I mean the, the the people wanted it. Yeah. And the yeah, the people seemed to like it. And then that led to uh, a match between Kane and Damian Sandow. Yeah. Uh, pretty good match. Damian Sandow is so good in the ring. He's so like he's so mature past the amount of time we've actually seen him in WWE. Yeah, he's such a good worker. Uh, Kane ended up picking up the victory. Uh, nothing else. I don't think real, real notable no. in that match. Uh, Nothing. It was just a one, two, three match. Yeah, rolling. Out. Kane's veteran Wiley's one out in the end, snatching Sando out of the sky when the enlightened one attempted a top rope strike and sealed his fate with a choke salami. You heard choke that salami. You heard that choke salami. Choke sa- oh yes. choke salami oh, salami Sala- Now we're both hungry. <laughs> um, <laughs> Might uh, have to go for a bite after maybe. this. Maybe. Uh, the, uh, the next segment was uh, they introduced the first inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame for this year. Mick uh, Foley. Um, yeah, a more deserving inductee that I don't think they could find. Um, oh, Mick Foley. Yeah. And now it, it's kind of interesting to try to guess under what persona Mick Foley will go into the Hall of Fame under. I, he's got four. I know. And I, I just think he should go in under Mick Foley. I think so. Either that or, I mean, since it's, it's WWE Hall of Fame, they can basically do whatever they want. He yeah. should go in under all four. He should. He I should, mean... He should, walk out, he should walk out onto the stage at four different times in the show wearing the four different... <laughs> his four different stuff, giving his, seg, his, his speech in four different segments. He should. I mean, he, he was kick-ass out of every, like, persona yeah. that he was. Yeah, man, mankind mean, was great. Yeah. Dude Love was hilarious. Yeah. Cactus Jack was a crazy son of a bitch. Oh, uh, hell and yeah. And then just Mick Foley. Yeah. So, yeah, he's he's had success in all, in every persona he's ever done. Yeah. And pretty well nobody else in wrestling can say that. Certainly not John Cena, who started, oh, God, as, no. the, who started as the prototype. Fuck's sakes. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's, there's a funny video online, by the way, of um, John Cena training in, I think it was XPW or something. Yeah. And, like, one of his trainers is trying to, it's, it was like, it was for a training video for other people. And he was like, okay, we got, we got prototype here and he's going to show you how to do an arm drag. 
and he does something completely different and the guy has to stand him up and be like, okay, we are actually asking you to do an arm drag. <laughs> so, so basically Richard's it up. Yes, exactly. We tell you to do a drop kick and he <laughs> tries a clothesline. <laughs> Poor Richard. <laughs> so uh, basically Mick Foley comes out and uh, says his lines and yeah. who should show up but the shield. Yes, the shield showed up. Uh, and which is which is good. That's what I've been saying. The shield needs to do. It needs to show up at random times, yeah. so you can never uh, you can never predict when they're going to show up. But what what triggered the shield to show up for Mick Foley being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame? Apparently, they thought it was an injustice. Uh, I I don't Supposedly. see how. I, no, but, I don't either. You but, know what? Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so. I, it's you know you're you're at, you're you are absolutely right there. Mm. It's kind of oh, but so in the end, who came out? There was uh, Orton, Sheamus, and Sheamus, Ryback, and Ryback. Ryback came Sheamus? out first. He got his ass kicked. She- right? Yeah. Was it Sheamus? Sheamus? Oh, it sure was. Look at that. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Orton came out. Yeah. Kind of Or- got his ass kicked, and then mm-hmm. Sheamus came out and dominated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, which, you know what, <laughs> I, if I was, if I was Foley, I would have been like, you know what, <laughs> bring it on. Undertaker threw me off the top of the cell. What the hell are you guys going to do to me? <laughs> yeah, basically. Unless you're going to pull me up to the roof and throw me into the ring, you know, but I could survive that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next segment is, was one of the most emotional, the most heart tugging, just just the saddest moment in the history of raw that i ever missed taking a piss uh i quit <laughs> yeah caitlin defeated eve for the divas championship and zero f's were given um I, uh, for, I for getting, eve anyway uh, i was getting a beer during this match were you i was i was literally in the bathroom where are you i was like okay. uh, you can say that it's you can say that it's like oh it's, you know people just say that no i was literally taking a piss while this match was going on um and yeah, so Caitlin ended up beating Eve in what actually ended up not being a too terrible match. When I went back and watched the replay, I was like, you know what? It's it's about it's about as good a divas match as they've had in the last six months. I guess so. So you know, right on. Um, I mean, with diva matches anyway, I mean they're they're hit and miss. They they are, and WWE really needs to make the decision to, you know, really understand which women are the are the actual good legit wrestlers and which ones aren't well and if they're not don't put them in the ring well i mean they gotta learn that i mean for one Mm -hmm. they they gotta give them Mm -hmm. i i I hate to say it but more matches to to make them better but for the love of god don't put them on tv (laughs) but yeah put them put them put them in the house shows put them in the house shows give them matches you know yeah fair enough make make them learn and i know uh for tv fit fit finley i believe is the road agent for the divas division and finley has just been like screaming at management to give them more matches but it's like when the quality of matches is so low it's hard to convince them to but at the same time you can you could put two or three divas matches on a house show yeah, like a house show in in backwater nowhere that no one will ever see, <laughs> except the twenty people that show up. Um, but Halifax? you know, Halifax. <laughs> you know, we we had a decent we had a decent crowd last time WWE well, showed up. I mean, it was only did, like but it was only like maybe th- thirty five hundred, maybe. I know, and that that kind of upsets me because I mean, it, it's hard to convince them to th- keep coming. They back. haven't come back. No, and that was in two thousand ten. I want a raw show. It would be really nice to have to have television it would. come back to Halifax. Like that yeah. would be phenomenal because you can put. But but I mean the, the the problem with it is raw is on too large a scale for Halifax now because max in that building you could put is twelve thousand. Yeah, and raw shows they're used to like nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, right? So it's unfortunately it's unless they did like an outdoor show, I could see them doing like an outdoor show in the commons I in could Halifax see that. and that would be phenomenal. That would be phenomenal. Do it like some do it like in the summertime and stuff. Yeah. Like you know, all the people they got there for KISS, can you imagine the fucking crowd that they would get for WWE Raw? Holy yeah. cow. 
So you anyways, heard it first, people. Yeah, exactly. You heard it here first, Mr. McMahon. I know you listen to our podcast. You're wearing the T-shirt. You had to make yourself with a Sharpie. <laughs> you love us. <laughs> Bring an outdoor, raw, or even SmackDown show, but preferably raw, uh, to uh, to the commons in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. All right, moving on. From the Raw show, um, the next we had uh, Brodus Clay step into CM Brodus Punk. Clay. I actually really liked this. Not necessarily the match itself, although, although I mean, you know, CM Punk gave looks makes Brodus Clay look pretty good. Oh, for sure. Uh, even even losing. Well, but, I mean, uh, CM Punk he can he can make anybody look good. Well, there's there that whole quote with Chris Jericho. He could wrestle with a broom and make it look good. Yeah. So uh, exactly, but like I liked the whole build to this. Like they went out back with I think it was Josh Matthews, mm-hmm. and they were. They were, he was interviewing Brodus Clay because remember CM Punk and his pipe bomb the previous yeah, week and he, mentioned Brodus Clay yeah, like this four hundred pound monster. That. Yeah, Brodus Clay he has to the, shuck and jive. Yeah, whatever. Souls his hands by picking up your here, kids here, and bringing here. them in the ring and shuck and jive. What exactly. The? And then Brodus is just like, I don't shuck and jive because I have to. I shuck and jive because I was born to. And I was just like, this is a really cool segment. Yeah. And I was like, is he actually going to step to the champ? And then they came back from commercial and he was in the ring. And I was like, all right, then. <laughs> ended up being a really good match. Of course, CM Punk ended up winning. Well, yeah. Uh, Brodus is obviously far too big to do the GTS. So if you'll notice, he finished it with the Anaconda Vice, <laughs> which I liked. Um, just, you know, good match all around. Uh, good build to it. You'll never see it again. No. Nope. Uh, CM Punk and Brodus Clay. You'll never see it again. It was a cool kind of one off thing. Uh, it, it seems to me like maybe it was one of those instances where maybe they wanted to work together, like in the back, and they just kind of showed up and was like, hey, why don't we do this? And they were like, yeah, cool, let's do that. Makes sense. So it was a cool thing to see. Big ups to Brodus Clay. It was a good match. Uh, 3MB defeated Sheamus in an over the top rope challenge. Do we really need to say any more uh, about this? Like, that's 3 man band. Baby. <laughs> All right, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving moving on because we're already almost a half hour in and we still have the rumble on. to talk about. Ooh. God damn. <clears throat> I'm telling you. Holy crap, we're at the page. God go. da- oh, God. Oh, no. God. We've lost it. Technical difficulties. Oh, we lost it. Standing podcast. Exactly. We've lost it. It doesn't want to open the WWE.com page. This is why I said don't use the WWE.com page. <laughs> Oh, are we frozen? We might even be frozen. Our Ustream thing might even be down. Um, and it'll, you know what? It'll, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, the, the, flash, oh, the flash plugin crashed. Oh, God, no. Damn. Oh, well, no worries. Okay. We, uh, we won't, we won't worry about that right we now. We are marching. We are marching. Marching on at the last fan standing podcast. Uh, so we, they had the Miz TV segment with uh, the Miz and Ric Flair. Antonio Cesaro came out and said stuff we didn't understand. <laughs> um, moving on. Uh, the other half of the tag team title match took place with uh, Daniel Bryan beating Cody Rhodes. Uh, good match. You can't you can't ask for two better guys in the ring than Daniel Bryan and Cody Rhodes. So in the ring, it was actually a good match. For some reason, Nick has turned on a third microphone. Well. Got to. What do you mean, got to? Got to. Uh oh. Oh, Nick's on the move, but he's gonna knock his thing over. It's empty. I got it. No worries. It's empty. Oh, right on. So Nick's on the move to try to fix our, uh, our, 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 our either fix our whatever or get another beer or one or the other. <laughs> uh, we had John Cena no sold Dolph Ziggler for twenty five minutes. John Cena in a steel always cage. knows sells. He really does. I like. Mean, that he does it's ju- it's just horrible and i'm sure you you told me a story mm-hmm. about this and mm-hmm. uh just just enlighten the people uh the story about uh what story sir oh we 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 w- was this live uh yeah i believe so the um the story about him training in fcw yeah I believe that's on the podcast. Okay. <laughs> it's be gentle. It's our first time. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I, I'm just reloading the Ustream I, stuff to get us back up here. We have no itinerary. <laughs> no, it's true. We're kind of going off the cuff. The, yeah. Um, in, in any case, just in case it's not on here, uh, the story was uh, John Cena was in a uh, 
a promotional tape for uh I think it was XPW and um he was uh had his trainer was trying to show how to do like an arm bar basically and Cena did something like it was either a side headlock takeover or something like that and the trainer stood him up and was like okay well actually we were trying to show them an arm bar and then, and then got him to do it again. Yeah, this um, was on. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it yeah, was. But I in said any case, about Richard. Yeah, there you go. You heard it again. <laughs> uh, so again, Cena, Cena no sold Dolph Ziggler for 25 minutes inside of a cage, and uh, of course beat him because you can't have Cena lose on Raw. Oh, that God, would be just no. ridiculous. Uh, not don't you know don't don't bother pushing the guy that's got the money in the bank briefcase and has a good chance to win the Royal Rumble. And he does. But then again, you know, you could say the same thing about Cena. Cena probably has a pretty damn good chance to win the friggin' Rumble. I hope he doesn't. No, I know. I hope I, he, I hope he doesn't either, but what can you do? <laughs> I mean, Cena is the uh is the company fanboy. Exactly. He's 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 the face of the friggin' company. I mean, he can bat his eyes and talk about uh fruity pebbles and, <laughs> and, all, and get all the whatever he wants. And all the thirteen year old girls are like, uh ah. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Raw ended with The Rock coming out and performing a rock concert. Although I think a concert has to be more than two songs. I think so. Uh, it was more like a rock he, set. He had three <laughs> songs, didn't he? I thought it was only two. He had the Vicky Guerrero song, which was really funny, by yeah, the way. Yeah, and then he sang about... Uh, Biatch, you look horrible <laughs> tonight. <laughs> that was pretty great. When he said Biatch, I actually laughed. For the oh, first yeah. time... For the first time listening to a rock promo in a long time, I actually laughed. It's not really? that I, it's not that I dislike him. I just I, I, I am actually finding his shtick getting old. I think so. Hmm. It, it, if he wants to come back, I mean, come back. Right. Don't come back and do this dilly like look at me. Yeah. And then uh, and then I'm, peace out. I'm old. I, I have a contract for like three viewing in a, like year. a year <laughs> yeah you know come back and wrestle which 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 kind of are, are we talking about the rock or are we talking about brock lesnar <laughs> <laughs> oh god i hope talking, brock lesnar doesn't come we're back. talking about both uh no 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 <laughs> brock nick is don't come back nick is apparently very against brock lesnar <laughs> coming back I don't like him. No, fair enough. Well, I think that's about we've exhausted pretty much all we could from the Raw 20th anniversary. Overall, overall, I gave it, I don't know, maybe like a a B minus. Like, I mean, it was a, a, a slightly above average Raw, but I just, I, for whatever reason, I just didn't, it didn't, it didn't get over with me like it should have. C plus plus. Ooh, <laughs> that's better than your average in high school, sir. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> woo 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 <laughs> woo woo woo! You know it. Um, wow that that um, that almost spiked on the uh, on the on the audio. That's good stuff. All radio, tell me everything you know. I will believe your every word. Just tell me so. Which uh, we didn't have any singing on this is, podcast. Uh, is um is. Ooh. Zach yes, Ryder the bird out. is the word. <laughs> What's that? I, is Zack Ryder done? I have no idea. Because I saw some tweets, and right. uh, I I don't know if I interpreted right. Okay, but is 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 like he, is is his contract done? You mean or well, not contract, but is uh, is he gone WWE? I don't think so. But I, I, again, I hadn't I hadn't heard anything about that. But what did? What was the um, what was the sort of the idea behind the tweets? Do you remember? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, they were a little while ago, and um, were they were they tweets on his account? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, I I don't know what to make of them. Interesting. Well, I'm just gonna quick pull up his Twitter account here and see if I can. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't know. No. Th- this this is killing time. We had too many dead de- yeah, air. So right, let- let's move on to the Royal Rumble. Apparently, he did a music video called Hoski. Really? Right on. Let's go to the Royal Rumble. Hoski, Broski, or ho- Hoskies? It's Hoski. Hoski. Just Hoski. Just to send ho- just one. It's Ski? Yeah. 
It's it's the theme that Eve Torres is going to use when she comes back. Oh, <laughs> ouch! All right, zingers on the zingers. last fan standing podcast. All right, so let's let's talk about the matches that's in the Royal Rumble before we actually talk about the Royal Rumble match itself. Okay, if that makes any sense. Match number one, and it's the biggest hyped up because we knew about it for months. For months, WWE title. CM Punk versus The Rock. Exactly. CM Punk putting his 400 and whatever day title <sighs> reign on the line against the most electrifying man in all the sports to- entertainment. <laughs> the most electrifying man in Tooth Fairy movies, The Rock. <laughs> in Disney movies. Yeah, yeah, Shoot. fair enough. Yeah, 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 that's true because he does more than just the Tooth Fairy movies yeah. for Disney. He does crappy Disney movies too. Oh, yes. Uh, and he also does G.I. Joe. Um, no guaranteed. How much you want to bet that we'll see the shield in this match? Honestly, I don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is it sounds to me like they're setting up something with the shield and Ryback for the Royal Rumble. Because remember when Ryback came out on Raw, well, when he was in the ring there and he was like, feed me shield, feed me shield. It's kind of, it kind of feels like maybe they're setting something, not a match, but something to happen like in the rumble match itself. Yeah. But th- they've always been hyping up. I mean, right back in the shield. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, fair who, enough. Who, that could just knows? be, yeah, that, so that, that could just be sort of business as usual. Sort yeah. of thing. Fair enough. Um, honestly, but if that was what they were going to be planning, I think it's a horrible idea. Because the worst way in the world to get the shield over with anybody, like the with anybody in the crowd, with fans, anything like that, is to put him up against the rock. Yeah. Because the rock will just want to do his rock thing, which is go out and come up with hashtag catchphrases, and then people stop taking the shield seriously. Yeah. Unless 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 the rock is willing to get his ass kicked. By the shield. Oh god, yes. Like if he's willing to like roll over and just get his ass kicked by the shield, then I'm okay with it because I want the shield to maintain this like almost Goldberg sort of thing about them that like nobody can stop them. Yeah. Not even the rock. So like I, I if they're gonna do that, I would want to see the shield go way like go way over on him. And I don't think WWE is willing to do that. Unless Rock does it on his way out. Like when he's when he's done and when he's gonna go back to movies and all that bullshit. So maybe I guess yeah, but I I can't see Rock or Rock mm-hmm. going out of WWE. No, fair enough. You know, I suppose I suppose I should have said like if he's gonna do it going out before he leaves for a few months and then comes back. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll yeah. put it that way. Okay, um, I I could probably see that. Fair enough. I mean, Rock, he's uh. <laughs> He, he, he's a smart man. He is a smart man. He's a rich man, too. He, he's a rich man, 20 too. million bucks a movie for crap movies. Yeah. And then whatever he makes at WWE in his contract. Yeah, exactly. Although, I do have to say, the character that he played in Fast Five was actually not half bad. I didn't see it. It was not a not half bad movie. It was okay. Uh, how do you think that match is going to finish, going back to CM Punk versus The Rock? Do you think we have a, a clean win for Punk? Do you think we have a DQ countout win for Punk? Clean for the Rock, count out DQ for the Rock, interference. Well, I suppose you sort of said you think maybe uh, the Shield might interfere. I source of interference, although I I cl- can see a clean win for CM Punk, mm-hmm. just because, of course, the Rock isn't going to come back. Right, he's not going to wrestle and compete every week. No, although you know, I think it, I think I I would love to see it. I think I think Rock's going to be here steady until WrestleMania. I don't think he's necessarily going to wrestle all that much. He'll probably wrestle maybe on the pay-per-views, yeah. which I think there's only one between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. But I figure he'll he'll probably wrestle on the pay-per-views and maybe a match or two on Raw or maybe an off match on SmackDown or something. But mm-hmm. I think he's going to be pretty visible between now and WrestleMania. Because one, one way or the other, he's got an opponent at WrestleMania. I, oh, for sure. I can I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. It's, it's like it's going to be probably one of three guys. It's either going to be Punk, Brock, or Austin. Austin. I I, w- I wish it would be actually. I shouldn't say actually. You know what? I may I might even say Undertaker. Wouldn't that be a head trip if Taker went back, came back, and came out to the Rock and was like twenty and zero, throat cut? I know. I don't necessarily want to see Undertaker Taker, come back. He, he, 
But he should be retired. He should be. He's done. I he's mean, done. So, and neither of us hate the Undertaker. We both love the oh, Undertaker. Undertaker I think. is uh, he, he one is of the man. one of the greatest I mean, of all he, time. He is. But he's done. He's done way too much for the company already. Um, but you you think you could see a, a clean win here for Punk? I could see probably Punk getting over with the one two three. If there's gonna be interference in the match, I would like to see Brad Maddox. And really? you might think I'm crazy for that. But Brad Maddox is somebody that I couldn't care less if The Rock whooped his ass every day between the end the end of the Rumble and Mania. It's true, and I mean they they were kind of playing it up a little bit when right. he was uh, trying to get uh, Paul Heyman's attention. Yes, Paul Heyman's like get out, get my away life. from here, you worm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know I don't want to see you anymore, and blah blah blah. Here's here's some instant some maybe this will even be a segment on the podcast instant justin booking i'm gonna book this thing are you i'm gonna book this thing okay maddox comes out during this match Mm -hmm. and helps cm punk retain the title remember how brad maddox is like i just like i want one more chance to win a match and get a contract yep vince signs brad maddox versus the rock on the, the raw after royal rumble interesting Rock lays down. Rock just lays down for him. Let's Brad Maddox pin him to get the contract. And then he gets back up, gets on the mic, and says, you want to know why I did that? Because I want to whoop your ass every day between now and WrestleMania, and now I can do it because now you're under contract. (laughs) I would love to see that. Wow. That is some instant Justin booking on the Last Fan Standing podcast. You just blew my mind. I would, it, it was awesome. I would love to do that. I would love to see that happen. <laughs> now, Vince, get at me, and I'd love a creative writing job with WWE. <laughs> um, okay, here's another question, and then we'll probably end up moving Shoot. on. Um, if, if CM Punk has the belt, so if Punk wins this, yes. and he keeps the belt towards WrestleMania, which I think we both think is probably the right thing to do. Oh, yeah. Is is who is his main focus between now and WrestleMania? Like, is it does it end up being The Rock, or does it end up being like is the Ryback feud over? Like he's beaten Ryback like three times now. Yeah, but not not clean. Right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's all it's always the Shield coming in helping him out. Right. I mean, if he had a match with Ryback, even if it wasn't a title match, mm-hmm. and he he beat him clean, then maybe we, we can let it go. But I mean, it's always the shield coming in to help him. Right. Fair enough. So, so you basically, you don't see that this feud as over. No. You th- Okay. So you think punk, punk and Ryback is going to keep going. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind seeing them because I mean, nobody is going to do Ryback any better for developing his wrestling career than CM Punk. Yeah. Nobody. For sure. You couldn't put him with anybody in the company. That's going to make him any better than by wrestling CM Punk. So, so I like that idea. Here, flip side of that. If Rock wins the belt. Yeah. Uh how do you think it should be handled? Like is is first do we think it's a good idea for Rock to win the belt and for them to end Punk's streak or like who else besides Punk could he sort of feud with? You know what I mean? Like if Rock wins the belt and he's not feuding with Punk anymore, who else does he feud with? It- there's basically no one for the rock um I got, unless I got, I Chris got somebody Jericho for comes back I, I got somebody for you who John Cena Rock Cena 2 at WrestleMania I don't want to see that no, I don't want to see that either but I'm, ta- I'm I'm jumping ahead in fucking creative's mind Rock Rock wins the belt Cena wins the rumble Rock Cena too. Get that out of your head. I I would hate to see it, but I fear that get it's going to get that happen. out of your head and get that out of creative's head. Yeah, fair enough. Because don't if, don't listen to if this. If I part. see that, you're going to uh, blame me. I, I will blame you, and I'll drive to wherever creative <laughs> is. Stanford, Stanford, Connecticut. Yeah, we'll go on a road trip. I'm okay with that. And uh, we'll we'll give them the peace of our minds. Pick up some trucker hookers. Oh yeah, sweet. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, World Heavyweight Championship match. Alberto Del Rio defending his newly won World Heavyweight Championship in the Big Show's Guaranteed Rematch. Which, earlier in the podcast, we kind of explained how this match came to be. Exactly. Uh, how do you see this match going? Um, well, Alberto Del Rio 
ADR for ADR. Those of you. Oh yeah, he's um. He seems to be handling Big Show. Well, yeah, that's what we kind of mentioned is like he he kind of made Big Show look like a bitch. Yeah. So I don't know if um You don't know if what? You don't know if what, sir. I don't know if this is just um their way of Getting the title off Big Show, or you know, it it it's just it's weird to see Alberto manhandling somebody that's like double, if not double and a half his uh, his weight. That's that's true. I know they were they were talking for a while about um, uh, Big Show potentially having an injury. Oh yeah, like that maybe that's why um, that maybe that's why they took the belt off him. Huh, interesting. Which I don't I don't think is the case, but it would could be kind of interesting to sort of find it out. Or maybe maybe Big Show just wants time off. Who knows? Or maybe they were just sick of Big Show having the belt. Who knows? We don't we're not in their heads, uh, unfortunately. Quite possibly. In in all case I can I can see Alberto Dario uh winning the belt or retaining the belt, actually. Right, uh, fair to enough. Say. Um, now here's, here's the major question. All right. Does Dolph cash in? Hell yeah. At, at Rumble? You want to see Dolph cash in at the Rumble? Well, you know, Dolph is an excellent wrestler. Oh, for sure. And I mean... He he's done so much that I mean you you see a match with him and he's I hate to, I I hate to say this but you're kind of like meh. It, uh, it's it's a uh, F- what do you mean, sir? Dolph Ziggler match. Right. You okay. Mean, I I know he's going to be excellent in it and you know do do I want to watch this? Interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever heard that that opinion about Ziggler before. Really? Yeah. But if he if he wins the belt, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think it's better to do it on a pay per view rather than just oh, yeah. like a regular Raw. Yeah, show. I would I would agree with that. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that he's that that I don't like it. Watching him, but I mean, it, his shit gets old. Okay, that's interesting. For those of you that were wondering, there, I had to go put wood in our stove, so I was, I was floating around with the wireless mic. You just witnessed Justin in the bathroom. Oh, buddy! Out of curiosity, could you actually hear me on your headphones? Yes. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I was worried that I had the mic on standby. <laughs> you were a big spike. In my headphones. Oh, was I? Oh, shit. Oh, well, whatever. People love my voice. Um, <laughs> yours, they could take or leave. <laughs> <laughs> Rivalries on uh, the Last Fan Standing podcast. I promise I'm not going to make that a thing. I just, I see opportunities for it. Uh, no problems. Lovely. Uh, the only other actual match right now that we have signed for the pay-per-view is the tag team title match. Between Team Hell No defending the tag titles against Team Rhodes Scholars. I think they're going to lose. I that was think me, sorry. They are going to lose the title. Do you? Yeah. You finally think that, that uh, Team Hell No is going to uh, fall apart. I finally think it's time to give Rhodes Scholars the the titles, the... the your Your... You're good. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I like I like that idea. Um, I've gone on record a couple of times saying that I think Team Hell No is much better apart. Like they're much better as singles competitors. Oh God, yes. Uh, maybe they could have like a short feud between the two of them. It's like we broke up as a tag team, and now we're gonna feud for like two weeks or something. Uh, and if they want to do that, great. But like they got to f- WWE has to find a way to sort of dissolve this team. And it's not that I don't like them as a team. It's that I like them much, much better as singles competitors. Mm. 
Daniel Bryan should be world champion in 2013. I'll go out. I'll go right out on a limb and say it. Yeah. He should be world champion in 2013. And I say that full well understanding that Dolph Ziggler has money in the bank and chances are he's going to be world champion at some point in 2013. I want to see Dolph Ziggler and Daniel Bryan. I want to see those two on pay-per-view. I want to see those two in a 60-minute Iron Man match at WrestleMania. That would be epic. I want to see those two because imagine Dolph Ziggler selling like a boss for 60 minutes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, I mean, I would I, – like, I, I that that's the feud really that I want to see in 2013. And um, ideally, it'll come to pass. But um, – I would I would agree with that. I think I think it's time for um, for Cody Rhodes and uh, and Damian Sandow, who again I love. I think he's great. Uh, I think it's time for them to hold that belt. I apologize for the coughing too. By the way, as we mentioned earlier, I'm kind of sick, but I'm uh, I'm I'm working on a Budweiser shot here. So we're <laughs> we're, we're working getting, on we're the getting through things exactly. Um, what do you think about the tag team division in WWE right now? It's dwindling. I mean, they isn't it? <laughs> they, yeah, I mean they're 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 starting. They they've got a couple good tag teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that I'm not particularly fond on being the prime time players. Oh, millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. Oh God, do I ever hate them? <laughs> and you know what, Titus O'Neil. Has a chance to be a superstar. He's so athletically gifted. He's over with the crowd. Mm. The crowd likes to dislike him, but I think they would even like to like him if he was a face. Um, Darren Young is atrocious. Yep. He's so bad. He's so awkward in the ring. And it's not a thing here with Cena where he's actually got the resolve to sort of take the fact that he's awkward in the ring and be like, look, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. Yeah. He's just, he's so bad. He's just fucking terrible. Um, he's just he's just not good, and that's not a good tag team. Like that tag team cost Gold Dust his job as a road agent. It cost um, A W that guy who was like their promo man. Yeah, he dropped that line about Kobe Bryant with a girl in a hotel room in Colorado. How he's unstopped, like making fun of the Kobe Bryant rape thing from a bunch of years back. Got his ass fired. So like this, this team is just like a cancer to anybody that comes close to it. Basically, I, I you know what, I do not like, and I was so happy to see that the Usos beat them on main event on yesterday on Wednesday. Oh yeah, yeah, the Usos beat them on main that, event. That's one show that I've never watched. There's not a whole lot of point to watch it. The, there's <laughs> main just... event, and what is the Saturday one that just started? Oh, it's. Uh... WWE Saturday Morning Slam or yeah. something like that. Yeah, that, that which that that's just basically a kid show. Oh, that's yeah. just like every week. It's just like Sin Cara against somebody because Sin Cara's got a mask and the kids Woo. like him. Yay, colors. Uh, yeah, all the colors of the world. Uh, <laughs> see, I got a I got a sultry singing voice even when I'm sick. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm not overly optimistic with the tag division in the WWE either. To be perfectly honest, I thought they were going somewhere. Yeah, because they've got good tag teams and they had one bomb. And I mentioned this before. They had one amazing tag team on NXT called Ascension. That was basically like the new version of like Gangrel and the Brood. Oh, really? Oh, they were. And they were amazing. And then WWE cuts one of them. So leaves the other guy with nothing to do. Why? I don't know if it was a wellness thing or what it was, but in any case, that was they were going to be they were going to be so huge. God they damn wellness, my they ass, could bring them back exactly. If they didn't fire Scott Hall for being so high on somas that his heart stopped, <laughs> <laughs> like, they shouldn't fire one guy for I don't know having a beer. Um, but anyways, yay wellness. Uh, so we've got three matches that signed for the card. We've sort of talked about all three. Uh, we both like CM Punk, I think, to retain the title against The Rock. Yes. I think we both like Del Rio to retain against The Big Show. That seems to be where we're heading. Correct. And uh, we both like Team Road Scholars to take the tag titles from Team Hell No. Affirmative, sir. Cool. Now, there's no matches currently signed for the Intercontinental title currently held by Wade Barrett, the United States title currently held by Antonio, I speak five languages, Cesaro, 
and no match currently for the women's title, which is held by Caitlyn. Well, Wade Barrett is uh, in the Royal Rumble. As is Antonio Cesaro. Yeah. So, so it's, how, it's, it's unlikely that, is, yeah. that we would see a title match yeah. with them. But at the same time, I could see one of the guys in the matches that we've already talked about potentially pulling double duty. Really? Like I could see, I could see Daniel Bryan entering the Royal Rumble, even though he's already got a match. True. Or I could see. I mean, it's happened before. Exactly, it has happened before. But uh, so, but it's it's still it's unlikely that we'll see either an Intercontinental or United States ch- title match. Um, if, if they were going to have one, I don't really know who Barrett's opponent would be. Maybe Kofi, Kofi but yeah. like Orton, Orton has no interest in the U in the U S title at all. So true. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe it might be Kofi. If Cesaro had a match would probably be against the Miz. Uh, they, they seem to be re- uh, starting up a feud there. Yeah. And if Caitlin, I mean, Caitlin just beat somebody for the women's title who then left the company. So yeah, I mean, she's got who, who no can she, um, Layla, maybe gold dust. Gold. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think that was you, pretty good. You did that pretty awesome. I fucking nailed that. You, you were practicing for I was, this, weren't you? I practice when no one's watching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we've got, we've got literally four minutes before we hit an hour, but we're, we're going to go over on this one. Oh but that's God. Okay. Yeah. For the, for the first ever episode. Exactly. We got to go over. We have to go over. The Royal Rumble match. One of my favorite matches that you could have in professional wrestling. I love the Royal Rumble. It is awesome. It's amazing. Remember last year we ordered pizza? We're going to do we it We should again. do that again. I don't work. I don't either. Plans have been made on the last fan standing podcast. That kind of hurt. Let, uh, let's, we tried. Let's we try that again. There we there go. go. We did it. Connection. We, fist pump successful, <laughs> or fist bump, I guess. The Royal Rumble match currently declared for the match, and this is uh, as f- close as uh, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, the main event that yes. happened last night. We have John Cena, who was the first to declare. Yeah. We have Sheamus. We have Randy Orton. Yeah, which declared next. Yeah. Yeah. We have, uh, on the same night, we had Dolph, uh, Heath Slater, Jinder Mahal, and Drew McIntyre Freedom. declare for the Rumble. whoop de fucking do They have a 10% chance, apparently. Well, 10%. <laughs> yeah. What? That, that's what Heath Slater said. Oh, he said he was talking to his mom, and apparently they had a 10% chance of winning. Even his mother only thought they had a 10% chance of winning? <laughs> apparently. If I was in the Rumble, my mom, my mother would be like, you're going to win it. <laughs> God. Unsupportive parents. Good Lord. Uh, then next we had uh, Antonio Cesaro yep. declared for the Rumble. And then Wade Barrett and The Miz have both declared, I believe, Wade this week. Barrett. Yes, sir. And apparently, Wade apparently Wade did declare on Raw. That was what the, what the Wikipedia page says, at least. Oh, yeah. But I don't remember where in that show Barrett declared for the Rumble. But anyways, so we so have ten. Ten. And who would you like to see uh, also be in the Raw Rumble? Uh, well, there's there's a number of guys that I think is like are likely to be in the Rumble. Um, originally I had Big Show written down, but I don't think that's true. Even if Big Show loses to Del Rio, I don't think he'll, I don't think Big Show's got the gas tank to pull double duty, to be quite, quite honest. That's true. Um, Rey Mysterio. Yep. If he's healthy. Lord knows if he is. Uh, Kofi. Kofi. Kofi, I figure, will be a guarantee. Of course. Um, I originally had written down Rhodes and, Rhodes and Sandow, but we think they're going to win the tag titles, so chances are they probably won't be in the yeah. Rumble. Uh, or Kane, uh, like we said, Kane and Daniel Bryan, one of those two could very well go in and pull double duty. What do you think of the shield? I think all three of them are going to be in it. Oh, for sure. Uh, I think, uh, and I think they're going to come out bang, bang, bang. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, I'd love to see them come out one, two, three. Yeah. I would. Really? Oh, absolutely. Like, uh, Ambrose, Ambrose comes out number one and, uh, Roman Reigns comes out number two and they don't do anything. They just stand in the ring. 
Just stand. They there. just stand in the ring for like two minutes. Just, just get in there and somebody throws them out, or they just stand there and not do anything. They they literally well because well, remember it starts with the first and the second. Yeah, and then they come down and they stand there for like two minutes or a minute or however long it is. Then number three comes out. Shields music hits again, and Seth Rollins comes ah, down, yes. and then all, all three of them are just standing there waiting for the next person to come down. That that makes. And then a couple a couple people come out. They eliminate them with ease, and then Ryback's music hits, and then Ryback comes out, and then it's the big brawl, and that's when the Royal Rumble can kind of pick up steam. Yeah, like you you take the guys that like you know there's no chance they're going to win the Rumble. Oh god, like. No. I, I just I actually just kind of got this in my head. Shield comes out one two three. Three man band comes out four five six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a three man. Oh, <laughs> I, that 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 I would I would actually kind of like to see. But uh, so I mean, obviously we know three man band is going to be in it, and okay. I think all three members of the Shield's going to be in it, and I think they're actually going to do something. You know what I mean? They, like, I they think they could actually make an impact. I mean, they're they're hyping them up so much that I mean, yeah. they they have to make some kind of impact. In and the, e- even if they're not in the match, I guarantee you, at some point, they come out and cost Ryback. Oh God, yes. I don't think there's any way Ryback wins this Rumble. No, unless they really want to hammer him back over. But in any case, uh, David Otunga, I think Otunga? is a guy that yeah. like. I don't necessarily want to see him, but he's one of those guys that would make good like cannon fodder for one of the main guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. Uh, sort of in the same vein, uh, Great Kali. He's a fan favorite. I would see them probably probably putting him in the rumble. Kali, yeah. Because the... it's like they they could they can play up the whole. Oh my God, he's seven foot two. How are they ever going to eliminate mm-hmm. him? And it's like, well, he's awkward as fuck. You just got to blow on him. <laughs> And over the top rope he goes because he just stumbles. Yeah, possibly. Um, he was eliminated by Beth Phoenix one year for fuck's sake. The Miz. Well, Miz is already declared. Miz, y- yeah. Right? <laughs> but yes, I, I honestly, I think, <laughs> honestly, I think the Miz could make like the last six. Oh God! Yes. Right, like the last six or the last eight. Yeah. And oh yeah, Miz, Miz for Miz for damn sure. Um. Uh, and a couple other guys that are just kind of sort of minor, whatever. Uh, Justin Gabriel, I could see him being placed in there at some point, maybe eliminating one guy and then getting eliminated himself. Now, uh, is there anybody that you think might uh, be returning? Return. The Royal Rumble? Ones that I think are going to return or ones that I want to return? Both. Both? All right. A guy, and this is a guy that I mentioned last year when we did the Royal Rumble video for my YouTube channel, uh, Diamond Dallas Page. And he's the one guy that I would love to see return because not only is he still in phenomenal shape, like I just, I've just always been a fan of his. Mm. So I, w- I would love to see him sort of return for a one-off kind of thing because I think the crowd would pop for it. Like as soon as the um, that Nirvana song basically starts playing like smells like teen spirit that he used. Yeah. I I would love to see that. Uh, and the one guy that's kind of the one guy that's kind of the one jewel in the professional wrestling crown that Vince McMahon has never been able to get sting sting. He's the one guy that Vince has never been able to get. I know. And And I don't think he's under contract right now to TNA. I can't say that for sure, but I don't think. But he's the one guy that I would love to see show up. I I, I would love to see him in WWE. At some point, I think he's a prime, and we kind of talked about this on the Aftermath Hangout, I think he's a prime pay-per-view opponent for The Undertaker. I think it should have happened three or four years ago. Oh, for sure. But I mean, but he's, he he's one of the... He doesn't want to... He just doesn't seem to want to... Uh, to want to come over. And I don't blame him. I think he's afraid that his character would be misused creatively, and he probably would. Well, of course. <laughs> it's, I it, mean, it's WWE. <laughs> of course it's WWE, and they have creative. Yeah. And we, we've learned about this both in, uh, like, the CM Punk DVD. Yes. Which, you know, he, he basically owed Paul Heyman for him still being CM Punk. Oh, absolutely. Because Paul Heyman was like, no, 
this sway is. Yeah. You know, he, don't, he's don't, good. Don't, don't, don't fuck, fuck with, with it. Exactly. Yeah. Believe me, this guy is going to be your franchise for the next 10 years. Yeah. Don't fuck with him. Yeah. Uh, as far as who I might also like to see return, you're really not going to like me saying this, but Brock Lesnar. I can really see Brock Lesnar showing up. You're buying lunch. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but, like, honestly, I could really see Lesnar showing up. And the reason that I say that is if he doesn't show up in the Rumble, how about him showing up during Punk Rock? I can see that more he's than a, the Rumble. He's a Paul Heyman guy. He's a Paul Heyman guy. Costs the Rock. Rock but versus Brock I, at WrestleMania. I hate goddamn Brock Lesnar. Because I, I, he, I'm not a fan of his either. But. No. He, he he can't wrestle anymore. He's been so out in the in the uh, MMA world right. that he's... And found moderate success there. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm I'm a big MMA fan, and I'm just going to divert for two seconds. Everybody talks about Brock Lesnar being in the MMA Hall of Fame, like the UFC Hall of Fame. Fuck that noise. He got he was five and four, yeah, or five and three in eight or nine fights. How how many people? How many fighters do you know that is one fight over five hundred that makes it to a fucking Hall of Fame? Yes, he won the belt. He won the belt from a guy that he outweighed by forty five pounds. And defended it against a guy he outweighed by 20 pounds. And when he went and actually fought top competition, he got his ass stomped. Yep. Anyways, I'm sorry. We're going to get back to wrestling now. Okay. Sorry, sir. Brock Lesnar to me is not a wrestler. Okay. He he left for the MMA or UFC mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Well, originally he left for football. For football, yes. Remember, like, he went back to, and he, he made the practice squad of the fucking Minnesota Vikings, who at the time had, like, one of the worst defenses in football. And he couldn't even crack the fucking main, he couldn't crack the fucking main roster wow. on one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Wow. And he also went on record, was like, I'm not going to play in the Canadian League, because the Canadian League's not up to my level. It's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, exactly. So he yeah, he left to go to football and then he left to go to MMA and as we said, had moderate success in MMA and then came back and it looks like it looked like he's kind of lost it. Yeah, he came back and it's like everything he did, he's like trying to, you know, double take just to not hurt. Oh man. <laughs> the people. Well, that 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 ex that extreme rules match that he had with Cena where like he botched he botched one spot and like landed on his head and then stood up and just put his arms up like yeah, yeah. just like <laughs> botches make Brock stronger. <laughs> <laughs> but like he literally like almost broke his neck. Like he flew over the top rope when he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> oh Brock. He's a bit of a clown, but I could I could see him making a bit of a comeback. Um Christian Christian, I think, yeah. is, is a big I, one who could, could come back. Yeah. As long as he doesn't Probably. use that fucking stupid one more match gimmick. Fuck, I hated that. Uh, what what I've been hearing is, um, la, 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 and la. I, I, I've seen this around a couple times, uh, Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's an interesting one. My only thought is, I thought Jeff Hardy was the TNA champion. I I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to pull up my phone here and check. Pull out the phone. Pull out the uh, the the what We're what is it open called? Data Wikipedia. It's called a gravity. A gravity. W what is your phone called? Oh, uh, it is it is an LG Optimus G. And it's how many months year old? I got it in December. So it's been like one month. So you're still uh, breastfeeding it? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. My nipples are really sore. Okay, it, so I'm pulling up Jeff Hardy's <laughs> Wikipedia page now. Now that we're trying to get back on track and trying to move away from the no-holds-barred part of the fucking podcast and actually keep talking wrestling. Although, you know what? I diverged for like two minutes on MMA, so that's probably you, fair you game. Kinda <laughs> you kind of did. You kind of dropped the ball there first. I'm still trying to pull up Jeff Hardy's Wikipedia page. God, my data thing is slow. Thanks, Telus. Oh, 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 oh. It's crawling along Should like old go people. To fuck. Bell. Oh, yeah, like Bell's any better. Um, hey. 
Here I'll a, get to you. Another one bites the dust. Here's a here's a name for you. Shoot. Jack Swagger. Jack Swagger. Like where the hell is Jack Swagger? I know. Been? I haven't seen him forever. Yeah, it's been a while. Is he out on injury or what? <laughs> out on injury or uh, wellness? Wellness. No, I, I don't think I don't think it's wellness. Yeah. See. Jeff Hardy's the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, which goes again to prove how fucking stupid TNA is. I, I, I like Jeff Hardy, but Jeff Hardy's too much of a fucking drug addict to give your main title. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for people that are trying to recover from, like, drug addictions and stuff like that, because I know it's a hard thing to do. But Jeff Hardy has been tagged more times on wellness policy than Lindsay Lohan in a hotel room. So, I mean, it's just, it's just he's been tagged a lot. I know. Um, but, but. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I like Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, way back in the 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 stirring on No Holds Barred podcast. Except it's not No Holds Barred. It's not the No Holds Barred. Oh, that's okay. We're probably gonna end up going an hour and fifteen on this shit. I mean, I liked him back in the WWE days. I've liked him back yep. in uh, what what was he in the WWF? Uh, yes, he was. Uh, he yeah. debuted in the late nineties. Oh yeah, a little bit back before I started watching. Right. Uh, I mean, he he was a high flyer. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was back then the showstopper. Yeah. Well, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick Nick also likes men flying at him. Um, uh, apparently, apparently, no. Uh, and, and I was I was a big Jeff Hardy fan back in the day too. Oh yeah. Um, and when uh, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy came together and yes. as a tag team, I mean that that was the best tag team. Oh, I love then. Oh, I loved them as a tag team for sure. Uh, let's see. Anybody else I could maybe see maybe coming back? Um. I would love for to see Batista come back I, at some point. Batista, yes. Uh, I doubt Definitely. I doubt that'll be this year. But uh, I would love to see Batista come back. Uh I I even had Jeff and Jeff and Matt Hardy down on the list. I could see Matt Hardy more than Jeff considering Jeff is the competition's top champion. True. But um True. Uh, the last one I'll toss out there, Shane McMahon. I would love to just be like here comes money. Exactly. Number number money two. Money talks. Here comes money. Money, 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 money. Dollar, 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 dollar. You really spiked my headphones, sir. Ching, ching, bling, bling. Cut the chatter. Uh, I would, I would, I would love to see Shane McMahon come out in the Royal Rumble because I think it would be a huge pop for the Vans. But here's the main question: Who do you think's going to win the thing? Well, keep in mind that the uh, the Royal Rumble yes. is uh, basically reserved for up and coming uh, superstars, right? Or superstars that are returning from injury. Lately, WWE has definitely had a track record of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. See Sheamus. See John Cena. See uh, Triple H, and and the like. So basically, my my guess is either Kofi or Wade Barrett. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Kofi, especially. Kofi's Kofi's kind of Kofi's a little out of left field, but I don't I don't dislike that pick. Well, I mean, it's... Kofi, he, I mean, he started in WWE. He's kind of uh, he's a high flyer and he's a good worker. He is. And I he, like him. I mean, he's just lost the um, the Intercontinental. Yes, sir. Uh, and he's free, so yeah. why not? Well, exactly. Why not? Eh. Um, I did. I did a quick little thing here where uh, same thing I did last year. I put random odds on it. Like sort of odds on who I think is going to win the rumble. Did you? Yeah. So I, I just I got some numbers listed here that I'll just toss at you. Going close um, to the computer screen. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, a member of three man band. I gave a million to one shot. That sounds right. Million to one. They'll because... come out, go in the ring. I'm three man band. Oh, <laughs> oh exactly. 
but like I get you know what million to one shot if WWE just has like a mental heart attack like Vince just pops an aneurysm or something and he's just like Heath Slater should win the rumble and then he does his walk out of the room uh so I, I gave it a million to one shot uh, Undertaker, I gave thousand to one shot because again, we don't even know when Undertaker's coming back. I really, I only uh, give it that because he has no WrestleMania plans yet. If they're going to have any for him, I think we're both of the opinion that they shouldn't. But they they shouldn't. But they're they're going to ride the, that the, horse the, until the game it falls came over. Out and he said that the Undertaker wasn't done. Yeah, he's like, you haven't seen the last of the Undertaker. So I mean, I'm the of, game. of course. The only really time that The Undertaker can, can come back is, of course, WrestleMania. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> of course, we're going to have a, a, a match. Apparently so. Undertaker Triple H 4, the end of the, end of the era. <laughs> the end of the era. Again. Again. Uh, Soon. <laughs> <laughs> when will then be now? Soon. Uh, a member of the Shield, I gave 999 to one odds. Slightly better than The Undertaker. Uh, just because I don't see them singling out somebody from the Shield just yet. They're doing too well as a group. True. So, like, 991. Kane, 500 to one odds. Again, we don't even know if Kane's going to be in the Rumble, but I give him those odds, again, still based on the whole mythology of him, like, eliminating 11 guys one year. So, it's like, if he gets in the Rumble, he could win it. So... And then, like you mentioned, Kofi Kingston, I also gave him 500 to 1 just really? because, like, I could see him continuing to feud for the Intercontinental title just as easily as winning the Rumble. So I, 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 knocked, the, uh, I knocked the odds down there. Same odds I also gave to The Miz. And then we start getting up into ones that it might end up being a little more likely. Wade Barrett, like you mentioned, I gave Wade uh, yeah. twice, twice the odds, which was 250 to 1. Or half the odds, I guess that makes sense. No, I, 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 I can see Wade, and I mean, yeah. I liked him. He's been moving up the ranks, moving on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment up. in the sky. Oh yes, man. I mean, but he's the Intercontinental, right? So yeah. what? What are they going to do with that? Well, exactly. I mean, of course, if he just wins the Royal Rumble, it just gives him a. a a title match true and i mean uh, but i mean i could even see him if he wins the royal rumble i could even see him dropping the intercontinental title just like holding it up and like the title would be vacant you can do like an intercontinental title tournament or something those are always fun so i mean i could see i could see something like that happening that's interesting ziggles dolph ziggler i gave a hundred to one odds only because he's got the money in the bank contract already so guarantees that he's going to see a title match between now and WrestleMania. But the chance is always there, especially if he tries to cash in unsuccessfully earlier in the night. It, then he could get in and win the Rumble. Unsuccessful. Yes. And uh, and the um, Money Del in the Rio bank. versus uh, Big Show match, which I right don't on. think you'll be. No, I, I think I think when he cashes in, he's gonna win the he's gonna win the title. Oh, for sure. I mean, Although, Big Show and Del Rio are so gung ho for each other. It's true that I'm I'm sure that Del Rio could just slip right in there. Oh yeah. Here's here's a thought. On the spot, Justin books it. Uh, Del Rio retains the title. Yeah. Dolph cashes in. Dolph also enters the Royal Rumble. And wins. Goes to WrestleMania. Fights whoever is the WWE champion. And wins. Dolph Ziggler unifies the titles. Another undisputed. Another undisputed champion. champion. Dolph Ziggler defends it on both shows. And we have an undisputed champion again. For the first time in, for the first time since really the end of the Attitude Era. That, that would be... I'm telling you, give me a job, WWE. I love wow. booking this shit. Uh, the fans wow. would love me. Anyways, uh, that's just, that won't happen, but I, I it's wish it kind of cool. I, I think it would be a cool because thing to do. That that would be, like you said, it hasn't happened since the end of the Attitude Era. Exactly. And it it would, it would be a nice change. I think it would be, too. 
Uh, moving on here, just we just got a couple more left. Uh, Sheamus, I gave fifty to one odds just because he won it last year. I do not want to see Sheamus win the fucking Royal Rumble again. I, I no. really don't want to see that happen. Uh, Daniel really? Bryan, I gave twenty five to one. I think, really? Uh, honest, I honestly think they're going to lose the tag belts, and Daniel Bryan's going to enter the Royal Rumble. And I think he's going to win it. No, I I, I really no. want to see it. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Shut up. Um, Orton, Orton, I gave ten to one. Because they've really been pushing Orton lately, but he wants to go on. But he wants to go on. Uh, he wants to take time off yeah. in 2013 too. So it's like, uh. God damn it, Orton! Basically, where all this is going is who I th- honestly think is going to win the Royal Rumble. As much as I don't want to say it, I honestly think John Cena is winning the Royal Rumble. Don't say it. I know. I don't. I don't want to say it. I don't like it. But I honestly think Cena is winning the Rumble. I'm sorry. Yes, I know. I'm buying lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I I know Cena is the company's fanboy, right? And I, I I mean he can pretty much do anything, get away with it, and right. have a match the next night, and come out and salute to the cameras and say it's time, it's made of time. <laughs> <laughs> he come out and fucking do all his shit, no sell his matches, and like still get boss. paid for it, but. Cena should not win the Royal Rumble. No, and I absolutely agree with you. He should not win the Royal Rumble at all. My fear is they're going to give it to him. Uh, you know, I mean, when Cena won Superstar of the Year, which is a total crock, uh, but when he won Superstar of the Year, he was like, 2013 is going to be my best year ever. What better way to start than by winning the Royal Rumble? Yeah. And again, this is my fear. I honestly hope it does not happen. I, John Cena doesn't need to win another Royal Rumble. He's already won one. He doesn't need to win the Rumble at all. No. And what does the Iron Sheik think of the possibility of John Cena winning the Royal Rumble? What does he think? Oh, John Cena. He was a piece of shit, no good motherfucker, French Canadian piece of shit faggot. Well, there you go. Sheiky doesn't like the idea. I don't like the idea either. I just can sadly see it happening. Well, since we're at a minute and twenty-two, minute just 20. about this is an hour and twenty-two. Uh, a minute it is and twenty-two. A minute 22. <laughs> We've been talking forever. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, this is in an hour and twenty-two minutes. <laughs> this hour has twenty-two minutes. Um, <laughs> We're going to cut this off now. It is an extra long, extra special first ever edition of Last Fan Standing Podcast, yes. which is a member of the No Holds Barred Podcast community. Right down here in the No <laughs> Holds Barred you, Dungeon. Can can you be a community when you only have two podcasts? Uh, we might be. Yeah, maybe. We're, but we're bringing in people. So exactly. I mean, yeah. We're, we're going to. We're a community. Yeah. We're, we're definitely going to be bringing in guests for future episodes, uh, hopefully in house as well as. Uh, as well as uh, over Skype or stuff like that. We are hoping. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was me coughing one more time. And ideally, the next time we come on here for a podcast, I will be feeling a little better. I am hoping. And with any luck. It'll start with a Baconator tonight. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, if, I, well, I, if they're still open. Wendy's. It's five after ten. So it depends. They can be still open. Uh, probably. We'll make them open. Exactly. Anyways, I, <laughs> I think that's where we're going. I think it. that's probably where we'll end up cutting uh, it off. Uh, we want to thank everybody for listening to us yes. ramble about uh, Raw 20th Anniversary and the Royal Rumble as well. Yeah. And now we're going to hit you with the stuff we hit you with at the end of every podcast. It is YouTube.com slash user slash No Holds Barred Podcast. Twitter.com slash NHB underscore podcast. We are on iTunes under JR and NS Podcast. Which is uh, our original podcast. This likely will not be no, on iTunes. Not. Yeah, we are with our we original. We are, but this is this. Yeah, yeah. This, this is this, exclusive. Yeah, yeah. This that, that's that's what that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying. Oh. What I'm saying to the people is that they need oh. to listen to everything that we do. Yes. Yes. Listen to find the man. exactly. Find us on Podomatic at Live Time with Justin and Nick. Uh, let's see. Uh, you stream. I gave him the Twitter. Ustream.tv slash channel slash no holds barred hyphen podcast and no holds barred hyphen hangout for the last minute. Fan exactly for last fan standing again last fan standing is going to be a YouTube exclusive which means that we are only going to the 
podcast is only going to be on the YouTube channel. So really, if you want to listen to everything that we're doing, just hit up the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash no holds barred podcast. It's a fun time. It's a fun time. We are the champs. I'm Justin. I'm Nick. And we are outskis of this place. Thank you so much for uh, coming by and listening to us talk about wrestling for almost an hour and a half. We're going to be hitting you in another two weeks' time with episode two of Last Fan Standing. A new episode of the No Holds Barred podcast will come out this Monday this evening. Monday, yes. I'm not working. Exactly. And we got some funny shit that's going to happen funny, on the No funny Holds Barred shit. podcast. Take us out, cheeky baby. Fuck you, piece of shit. Later. Well, that wasn't very nice. (laughs) See you later. Oh, yeah.